So in this video we're going to have a look at gamma function values and we're going to try and answer these six questions using properties of the gamma function. Now first of all let's have a look at what the gamma function is and what its properties are. So we know that the gamma function is related to the factorial function and n times gamma of n that is the same as n factorial. OK, so try and get gamma on its own. Just divide both sides by n. And then we get gamma n on its own on the left hand side. And here we're left with n factorial over n. So n factorial, we know that is n times n minus 1, n minus 2, blah, 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 blah. And then down to 2 and then times 1. That's what the n factorial is. And then if we just divide that by n, we'll see here we can cancel out our n on the top and bottom. So we know that gamma n is the same as n minus 1 factorial. That's how it's related to the gamma function. So looking at that, let's try and calculate gamma value 4. So let's see what that gives us. So question 1, gamma 4. So using our equation here, n minus 1 factorial, we know that's just going to be 4 minus 1 factorial, which is the same as 3 factorial. So we know that that is 1 times 2 times 3, which we know is 6. So our first gamma value here, 6, we can come to that reasonably easy enough. Now the second one is going to involve some multiplication. So we need gamma 3 times gamma 5. So let's try and work that one out. So question 2. We've got gamma 3. Just make my gammas look a little bit better. And then times that by gamma of 5. So that's going to be 3 minus 1 factorial. And then 5 minus 1 factorial. Now we know this is 2 factorial times 4 factorial. So let's just write that down there now. So 2 factorial times 4 factorial. And then 2 factorial is 2. 4 factorial is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, which is 24. So that gives us 48. So that's number 2 taken care of. Okay, now these next ones which are all division, these are going to take a little bit more space and a little bit more algebra. So I'm now going to take this off the board, write these properties on the top and then we'll commence on question three when I've cleared the board. Okay, so we've got our properties written up here. We've got our first two questions answered. We're now going to have a look at trying to answer question three. So gamma of seven over gamma five. So let's have a look at that. So we need something here to try and help us try and get this top bit containing gamma of five. Because when we come to question six, trying to work out n minus one factorial, so 601 factorial, for example, that's going to take us for a long, long time. And to plug that into a calculator, it's not going to work. So we need to try and use another one of these properties using two, two parts together see if you can come up with another one. So if gamma n equals n minus 1 factorial, so n minus 1 factorial could then be n minus 1 times gamma n minus 1. So let's try that. So n minus 1 gamma of n minus 1 equals n minus 1 factorial, which also equals gamma of n. So that's our n minus 1 factorial give us gamma n. So using these two, we then get this rule here, which is what we need. So using that property here for gamma of seven, we could do n minus one times gamma of n minus one. So that would give us six gamma of six. And then that's then gonna give us gamma of n. That's our gamma of seven. So now just divide this by gamma of five. 
Okay. So we're still not quite there yet to cancel out with a gamma of five. So let's use this property again on this gamma of six and still keep this six here. So that's the same as six. So gamma of six would then become five times gamma of five. Oh, gamma of five over gamma of five. So then we can cancel these out and then we're left with six times five, which we know it's just 30. So number three is going to give us 30. Okay, so we can use that property again for question four. Let's try that. So question four, gamma of nine over gamma of six. So using this same method, we need to try and get gamma of six in the numerator so we can cross cancel it out. So let's try that. So gamma of nine using this property is the same as eight gamma of eight over gamma of six. So let's go one more time. So now we've got eight times, now handling with the gamma of eight, we've then got seven times gamma of seven over gamma of six. And again, let's go one more time. I'm just gonna bring it down here. I don't wanna go over there. So we've got eight times seven times a gamma of seven with this, we've then got six times gamma of six divided by gamma of six. So now we can cross cancel. And then we've got eight times seven times six, or seven eighths of 56. 56 times six is 168, 336. Okay, so let's take this off the board and let's try this tricky looking number five. So it's not big numbers, but it's got fractions on it. Okay, question five. This one's looking a bit tricky. So I don't know much about 6.25 or 5.25 factorial. So I'm gonna to need to use some of the gamma properties to try and get somewhere on this. Okay. So I've got gamma 4.25 in my denominator and I've got 6.25 in my numerator. So they're exactly two apart. So I could perhaps try this property here and try and get down to this 4.25 in my numerator. So let's try that. So gamma of 6.25, if I subtract one, I've got 5.25 times gamma of 5.25 over gamma 4.25. Okay, well I don't know too much about these two values, so I'm definitely going to need to stick to this property. So then I've got breaking this one down and keeping my 5.25, I've then got 4.25 times gamma of 4.25 and that's very handy because I then can divide that by gamma of 4.25. So again, these are going to cancel out. And now all I need to do, to do now is to work out the value of that times that. So I've got five and a quarter times four and a quarter. So that's going to give me 21 over four times 17 over four. 21 times 17, well that's 340 plus 17, that's 357. Four four is 16. Okay. I can't see any simplification in that, so I'm just going to declare that as my answer. So that would be 357 over 16. Okay, now let's take this off the board again. And let's try this one here. Okay, let's try question six. Gamma of 602 divided by gamma of 600. Okay, 600 factorial or 601 factorial or whatever I'm going to need to work this out, I'm never going to get there. So I'm definitely going to need this property here. So n minus one times gamma of n minus one. So I've now got 601 times gamma of 601 divided by gamma 600. Okay, so again, using our formula, change this one down again. We've now got 601 times 
601 in here, I can then subtract by 1, 600 times gamma of 600. And now I don't need to work out my gamma 600 because if I write that in my denominator, as you can see, just cancel that out. And now 601 times 600. So what does that come to? 601 times 600. So that's going to give me 360,600. So that's going to be my answer to number six. Okay. Okay, so there's how we handle the gamma function values.